show you a little bit uh, about what's going on in the campaign. We thought it's best if we take one player's bloodline and show you exactly how their post-game campaign step looks. Now, the first thing uh, you'll do is you will record your results in the Chronicle booklet. We have a lot of stuff. So uh, we have a lot of stuff, and we need to keep to the order to yeah. not keep, yeah. be confused. So the Chronicle booklet tells the, uh, the story of the feuding vampires through history, and it's divided into eras. So each game or chapter fits into an era, and three of these chapters are... Uh, constitutes an era. And at the end of that, one of us will have dominated the era and will shape the world of darkness in a particular way. That obviously helps them and hinders their opponents. So we're going to record okay. for all time uh, our position in each game and we'll get certain points for this era based on our position. And we'll also record the clan that we were so that over time we'll start to see the relative strengths of the clans in this particular campaign because they'll be, they'll be different for every, every table. Um, and that was sadly Simon with the Torridor, uh, Matthias with the Nosferatu, and then very close, very close in third place uh, with Nick Efros, the first. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, never gets old. So I've, yes, uh, I've done my duty as the keeper of records. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, game count. The game count we have uh, one um, ability that uh, the, um, the vanquished player... Uh, right, the reverse winner. So what I get, get to, do, to do, at the start of the campaign, we have seven clan schemes for each of the clans. And we have a massive research deck, which are additional clan schemes that will be unlocked through the game, through the campaign. The mm -hmm. way that works is the player who lost gets to uh, cultivate the clan that they just played, taking one of their uh, available clan schemes and adding it for the rest of the campaign. So I'm going to be thinking about uh, what they particularly needed and strengthening the deck in that way. And I'm going to choose this scheme, mm -hmm. adding it to the venture envelope for the rest of the game, and move on to the next step. Right. Um, I uh, managed to uh, take two missions in the game uh, due to the fact that I gathered the most clandestine vampires and the most uh, cosmopolitan vampires, so multicolored vampires. Um, the first one is the Templar Sperm. And um, what I get to do for each mission is I get to uh, read the story, make a decision, gain a uh, reward. So uh, this one is the Templar's burn in 1307. Jacques de Molay burns at the stake thanks to a little canine meddling. A prime opportunity to see what the Templars have hiding in their vaults. So you can see that it makes sense that me having the most clandestine vampires gets to see what is in those walls. Uh, so let's see. Someone has cleared the walls already. Your coterie only captures a few stragglers from the order. You decide to gift them to King Philip, gaining a point in mortals, or set them free, gaining a point in mercy. Now, uh, since I'm Valerian the Merciful, I'm basically boxed into uh, gaining that additional point in um, Mercy. And uh, that is it for my decision for this mission. And secondly, my reward in this case is gain status. Uh, and that allows me to take a look at the vampires from my bloodline that I've um, uh, lined up here and choose one of them um, uh, to turn them into an Ancilla. Uh, I think since I played the Toreador in this game, I'm going to be going uh, with the Artist. That's a very formidable um, addition to the Toreador lineup. Uh, so I'm going to take it out of the sleeve, turn it around, uh, add the, the Toreador sticker. Right, just like in the prologue just like in the prologue. And I'm going to do the same thing uh, for the other mission, uh, but you already uh, know how most of this works. Uh, one thing that, that's different uh, for this second mission is that uh, it 
gives me a different reward actually. So the first reward was that uh, the artist gained status and now this time I'm gaining an asset. Um, this uh, mission was about uh, using advances in sailing to travel, to have my ghouls travel the great sea, establishing a network of contacts. And uh, the asset I gain is exactly this um, uh, network of contacts. Now the way assets work is they are um, things that you can take uh, from one game to the next and um, gain a certain kind of uh, advantage. Uh, by spending them. By spending That's them, the exactly. So in every game, you're deciding which resources, which assets from previous games are worth spending at this point and which you want to hold on to uh, for more important times because nothing worse than spending these assets and then not winning the game anyway. Exactly, and the Levant Contacts is a clandestine asset, so um, that's one of the four types of assets there are, and that decides, uh, determines what kind of effect uh, I will be uh, gaining. Uh, there's a third kind of reward that you can gain, and that is... Um, that was me. I got that one. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank um, you, thank um, you. You'll see, it's, it's pretty bitter, as you'll see. <laughs> Um, so, um, uh, what Ash unlocked in one of his missions was a famous character, actually, in this case, Dante Dante, Adieri. yeah, he is now a Venturu for all time. He has three abilities, uh, which makes him a little more powerful than, than the other run-of-the-mill NCOA. Uh, the next thing that uh, every player actually uh, can do is um, add a sticker to any eligible uh, vampire in the bloodline. Mm -hmm. Again, what kind of sticker I can take depends on what kind of character I am. So since I am Valerian the Merciful, I'm going to be able to choose from the uh, category, um, and I have actually two points in Mercy, so um, I can choose Say from... like it's a good thing. Well, yeah, I mean, it's mercy. It's like the it's like the self-motivated kind of mercy that's going to get me ahead in life, unlife. <laughs> that sounds uh, very convincing. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's, it's it's part of my it's part of my shtick, okay? Uh, it's it's part of my my disguise. Uh, anyway, so um, two points in vampire uh, in, in in mercy means uh, I can choose between. Uh, having uh, an ancilla, ancilla become devout or uh, having them gain uh, solidarity as an ability. And the other thing I can do is subterfuge. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and add um, solidarity uh, to the Leper Knight. And what does that do? Now, that means that from now on until the end of time, uh, the Leper Knight is uh, going to be able to rejuvenate any vampire whenever he uh, mm. joins the bloodline. Nice. That's quite powerful. Yeah. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. And every player, of course, adds a sticker if they have an available slot. I did not. That's fine. Right. Um, the fact that I won, what that means uh, for the next games is not only that uh, both of them will probably gang up on me again, and much worse than before, uh, but also uh, that I um, gain a disadvantage uh, going into the next game. So uh, that is the final step of the um, post-game uh, uh, upkeep. Uh, I'm going to shuffle these. And it turns out my victory in Florence has led to me developing the mania of the virtuoso because I was so um, elegantly playing you guys off against each other uh, <laughs> that I've developed a kind of uh, taste uh, Ooh, and for this. Exhaust uh, your clan leader. Yeah, that means I start with an exhausted clan leader in the next game, which is fine with me because I'm Valerian the Merciful, so I don't mind mm. giving you that little, uh, giving you that little 
push you might need to um, reach my level. And that's it. He'll just smack talk for days until the next game. Uh, that's that's all of the all of the end game. Uh, and may I remind you, the last time that happened, I lost the next yeah. five games. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, so shit. yeah, uh, the game continues like this. Uh, every every three games, we resolve an error, which determines who has dominated that 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 stage of history and they'll be able to shape the world of darkness into their advantage. Right, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've not even shown yet. Yeah, there's also a bunch of stuff that will be unlocked as you, and will become more clear as you play more games. Uh, but that is the first game of the new Office campaign. And now Francisco and I have a grudge to settle. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Ciao.